Well, hello, Arizona, and welcome to Arizona Talk Radio, hosted by Rob Scribner and Derek Rinchler. Join us as we talk about Arizona facts and news, and then maybe just a little bit of gossip. Grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, kick back, and enjoy the hour with Rob and Derek. Arizona Talk Radio is part of Cutting Edge Radio Network. And now, let's start the show. Well, hello, Arizona. What's up? <laughs> so, uh, uh, today's kind of a special day because we got a guest today. And I don't want to waste any time to get her on here. So, guess who returned with us? Yes. Here, here it comes. Da, 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 da. Helen! <laughs> How are you? What's up? Hello, Arizona. <laughs> I've been waiting to do that. <laughs> wow. So, um, i got to turn my thing down here, don't I? Thank you for showing up, Helen, and saying hello and hanging with us. We appreciate you. Yes. Thank you. So uh, I Helen's see you guys right now. Derek, wearing, why are you wearing a green shirt? I don't. That's a big question. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> He's got what uh, so we're using a green screen. And so what does Derek do? He shows up with a green shirt. <laughs> I'm limited on clothes. <laughs> I, got, I need to start washing my clothes. <laughs> you're, li- you're living on the edge. That's what you're exactly, doing. You're living on the exactly. edge. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Oh I see. God. So um, how are you guys? Great. Doing great. Just hanging out, just trying to get through this hot summer. Well, I, I heard you guys talking about that the other day, that it, it's like bazillion degrees there already. Like, the, <laughs> what, What's the point? I, I've always wanted to go to Arizona, and I'm expecting an invite quite soon from certain people now. Not and yeah. I feel you didn't like, invite, I didn't yeah, invite Well, her. she is now. <laughs> Come on. Hey. Well, I'm dropping a hint, there you and go. <laughs> the thing is, is um, if it's that hot, I'm not coming. Yeah. Well, what, no. what we, what, it, you just got to change your way of life a little bit. So this is the time that you go to casinos. Yep, this is yep. the time you go to movies. Yep. This is the time to go shopping. Yep, true. This is the time to go up north to Flagstaff and Page and all mm-hmm. those real pretty areas up there. So we just change our lifestyle a little bit. Yeah. But what what do you do? I mean, if it's okay, you change your lifestyle, but what do you do? You walk from the house to the car, and that's it. That's the extent of your being outside. What oh, get about much. getting your vitamin yeah, D yeah, and all pretty, that stuff? <laughs> or hang by the Seriously? pool or something. Yeah, we do a lot of pool time. Yeah, big time. Yeah. So uh, the, our, the 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 big commodity down here is shade. Yes. <laughs> yes. I guess so. Seriously. Yes. But doesn't the pool? Isn't the pool? water really hot uh not really I, it, during the midsummer it gets up pretty yeah, yeah. ours is only like 80 degrees today yeah something like that so i have a little i'm having a little technical issue for myself i can see helen on my screen to my side here so i keep looking over there but i know <laughs> i'm supposed to be looking up there <laughs> so forgive me people if i'm not looking at the screen i'm all confused we're looking all around <laughs> So okay, guys. All right. I so, see you guys just fine on Facebook. So, oh, nice. That's yeah. working. I'm I see both of you. It looks like our sound is working okay, but um, um, it's like okay. you got to talk to two people at once, right? The camera and so turn on the sound and that for a minute and let Helen say hello. Okay, go for it. Say hello, Helen. Hello, Helen. She coming across? Hello, Rob. Yeah. Hello, yeah. Derek. Okay, go ahead and shut that one off. Hi, guys. All right, just double checking that the internet's getting you okay. So cool. We're good. Yeah, yeah. we're okay. good. We're good. I mean, we got this mastered. Wait, I mean, hopefully, knock on wood, Rob. We got it. <laughs> we cheats ourselves a lot. Oh my gosh! So, um, so Helen, uh, for those who don't know Helen, yeah. Helen is from the uh, Seventeen Second. Yep. And she uh, specializes in conversations about law of attraction. Mm-hmm. And but I'm going to throw her today a little more because. Uh, today I want to talk about, and I don't want to yet, not yet. I'm gonna, that's a, not yet. Okay. Uh, but we're going to talk about paradigms and paradigm okay. shifting. Gotcha. gotcha. And uh, but not until we get to know Helen. A yeah. Tell, more. So Helen's over yeah. in New York. Tell us what's going on in New York. Well, um, we went right to summer a few days ago, where it was in uh, about 90 degrees, and everybody was walking around in shorts. And then it went down to about 60 and 50 degrees, and everybody was walking around in shorts. Um, for a woman, you see, that tends to be a bit of a problem because we have our winter-fall wardrobe, 
gotcha. and our spring summer wardrobe. And when it just goes to one, two, three, we all get confused. Should we wear flip flops or should we not wear flip flops? Should we wear shorts or not to wear shorts? And then we go through the whole thing. Well, wait a minute. If I'm going to wear flip flops, I have to get my toes done. All right. If I'm going to get my toes done, I'm going to wear shorts. I have to shave my legs. Okay. But if I have to shave my legs, then I have to, I have to get fake tan because my legs are all white from the winter. I mean, it presents stressful. so many problems. It's a lot that, of work. Um, <laughs> is that better? So if you lived in Arizona, you wear your flip-flops all the time, and you wear your shorts all the time. You just naturally get a tan, automatic. That's it. (laughs) Well, 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 how are you going to get tan if it's too hot? You're going to get burned to a crisp like a crispy critter. (laughs) That's true. I'm sorry. You get lobster. It's kind of funny. Most of the people down here in Arizona avoid the sun, and so they're actually very white. Yeah, or pale. Not very tan, let's put it that way. (laughs) um, Now, up here, everybody's... Got to get a tan. I have to be tan. It's summertime. I have to, myself included. I feel like I look healthier with a tan. I like being outside. Yeah. But, but we really don't get, um, you know, really uh, hit with you know such hot, hot weather. We get a heat spell every once in a while, but not like you guys. You know, just going through day in and day out. I would think that'd be not a lot of fun. Is there a high wow. incidence of skin cancer in Arizona? There, yeah, it's, it's like an oven here. Yeah, it's really bad. <laughs> so have you heard many reports of skin cancer problems or anything down here? Oh, all the time, yeah. Oh. They, they always say wear sunscreen, you know, and obviously, but yeah, skin cancer down here is pretty bad. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Huh. All right. Definitely a lot of well, it. Well, I was just wondering, but um, New York is doing fine. You know, the leaves are all out, which is actually kind of nice. It's been kind of nice today. But I think we're still going to be anywhere ranging between 55 to 65. Ooh, Excuse crazy. me, the phone. Oh, that's Sorry. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. That's, this is my studio, my refrigerator. Here is it. my I home studio. Yeah, right to the food. Grab so, a cold drink. Well, if you want, I'll get you a beer out of exactly. the fridge. I'll just shoot it over to you. Well, okay? You're working Don't smart, you not hard. I love it. No, I still keep looking at the wrong screen. <laughs> me too, me too. <laughs> Well, I'm holding you guys up um, on Facebook. I'm looking at you, Rob. And wait, Rob, wait. Derek's over, over there. Hi, hi, Derek. I'm moving. Uh, hi. Yeah. Hi. Yeah, yeah, hi. Yeah, yeah, there we go. So, wait, there we go. <laughs> there we hi. go. I got it. I, so, I saw your hand. So the fun, Yeah, the funny part is is Helen can only see me through a – and the people can't see my computer, but she yeah. sees me through a webcam. Well, how big is your computer screen? What yeah. say, 24 inches? 36? Yeah, it's a big screen. So he, Rob has this 36-inch computer. It's really big, so if you turned it, he would probably knock all the lights <laughs> and all this stuff. So and It's amazing that that camera doesn't see this big Yeah, computer. I don't see it at all. So, it's, yeah. it's cool. Um, but don't, yeah, it's, don't make any sudden movements, no, that's exactly. for sure. Oh, yeah, yeah. Everything's like, perfect. <laughs> yeah, it's like, knock on wood. I'm right. telling you, it's like, everything's great here. So yeah. uh, um, I was going to ask you two questions before we talk about paradigms. Okay. Helen, you ready? What's yep. your what's what's your take on, and how would you apply law of attraction to? to I'll use both both examples. Oh I'm no! I'm sure you've heard of safe rooms and cry rooms. What's your opinion what? on the on a cry room or safe spaces? And would you use law of attraction rules instead of using cry rooms or safe spaces? I have the faintest idea what you're talking about. Yeah, really? yeah explain to her what about. those are. Cause okay, so yeah. the universities uh, in the new millennials and, and the folks like there are finding um, uh, that they want safe spaces where yeah. they can go oh. in and, and have you know personal time and, and, and get their emotions yeah. in check. And then okay. now they're introducing cry rooms. Yeah, like they're... A yeah. place to go cry. Yeah, and it's just just go in a room and it's a closet kind of thing, and 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 cry your heart out, cry it out, get it out of yourself, and then get back on back on the back yeah, on track. Exactly. And I assume you do this while you're on on the payroll. Yeah, why? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So cry wow. rooms and safe safe rooms. What do you think? What do you think? Um, What's your opinion? Hmm. You think huh. our youngins uh, need to kind of. Uh, Get a little tougher, or, or is you think, I think maybe the emotional outlet bit. is good for them? Yeah. Um, no, I think um, we've got to put our big big people pants on, yes. and uh, move on from things that. If you're that upset about something, deal with it. But to go into a room and cry and give people that, uh, mm, what's the word? 
give them an outlet. I, I think that's kind of silly. That kind of that kind of interferes with everyday life <laughs> she and learning. Like I'm yeah. having a bad day. Can you pl- hand me a tissue, please? Right, I can't no. take it. No, that doesn't work. Like, no, no, it does not work. We've tried no. to talk about it here, and we're both kind of been brought up to kind of be strong. Yeah, exactly. I thought yeah. if you were joking around, and you're like, no, these really these exist. Are serious. Yeah, that's they crazy are. to me. No. Yeah. No, uh, and I think with the law of attraction, I would say you're allowed to get upset, then let it go, and think about it when you get home or get out of class or whatever, but uh, no, not to disrupt the whole uh, class of I'm going to the safe room now and I'm going to have my little temper tantrum. That doesn't work for me. That, that really doesn't work for me. Yeah, um, I agree. I, I, I do like the idea. I remember when this happened um, – not to bring up a bummer, but when Parkland happened and they talked about having safe rooms where if there was um, uh, a shooter mm-hmm. coming yeah, those into are a like classroom, rooms or something. that, yeah, that makes everybody sense. could run, run into those safe rooms. And I think that is a great idea. But at the same point, I don't want to start a whole big discussion about it. Yeah, yeah. How expensive is that and all that other kind of stuff. But to have a room where you're going to go off and cry and have a temper tantrum, I think, is, I think it's silly. Let's put our big people pants on. But I'm going to take this one step further. Um, There was a news story today in New Jersey about a cheerleading squad. And the powers that be in this school decided that if um, everybody gets, everybody makes the cheerleading squad, nobody gets left off, everybody gets on the squad. And one, one person who was on the squad said, that kind of defeats the whole purpose of me working so hard. But yet the school, the powers that be, said it's all about inclusion. Mm. And I thought it was very interesting. And I thought, well, you know, these kids do work hard. I don't know if you've ever watched high school cheerleader, cheerleading, but oh my gosh, it, it's yeah. so athletic. It's competitive. And that's yeah. amazing. But at the same point, what's wrong with including everybody because I don't know about you cheerleading when I was growing up it was that elitist kind of um, sure. group of people mm-hmm. where you know the cheerleaders were the big deal and everything else so yeah. I think it's kind of a nice idea but yet yeah I- I'm kind of men's and men's about that how do you feel about that you guys <laughs> yeah. I-, I come from the school of uh, trophies and, 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 you, and you earn them and you earn them you know so uh, I, I, mm-hmm. It's like when I was in Little League, um, I was not the best player the first year, mm-hmm. and I played first base, and I was pretty young, maybe 9 or 10, and the next year I was still first base, but I started you know, starting to hit the ball more and all yeah. that, and, I, and, and in that year, I didn't get like a big trophy, but I got most improved. Sure. Which, MVP, you know, I mean, yeah. yeah, but they didn't give everybody trophies, but um, to me, that trophy meant a lot because I had to really earn that. Yeah, yeah. Now, how would mm-hmm. I feel if we were just giving trophies to everybody? I don't know. Um, but, you know, I, was, I come from a different generation, so. Yeah. But, uh, That's tough. I mean, with cheerleading, I know there's the main cheerleading squad, and then they got some of the people that are doing stuff in the background, right? Yeah. I think I like the competitiveness. I think that's kind of how our environment is, and the Mm-hmm. The best should kind of be on the team, and the ones. I mean, if there's a handicap or something like that, I think like you know maybe someone's at, you know a little bit different than others. Then I think there's you know different situations, okay. but I think tryouts and okay. things I think yeah. are healthy. Or uh, yeah, I mean, well, um, no, but either ahead. you're going to do it or you're not. Yeah, Suppose yeah. there's um, somebody with Down syndrome that wants sure. to be on the squad. Yeah, and some and that kid tries out and they don't make it. So. I found that very interesting because Derek, what I think, I think you're right. If somebody's handicapped, you know, do the right thing. Yeah, you know, show sure. some kindness. Absolutely. Absolutely. But um, I kind of, I'm, I'm kind of at the age of, who cares what the hell? It'd be a nice thing to do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I do sure. understand about the trophies. For you know sure. that people that work hard, then it diminishes it. But can't that person who worked hard know in their heart, I worked hard, I did earn this. But I'm turning the other cheek to say, why not? Yeah. I like the idea. I do. <laughs> I'm not sold. <laughs> yeah, no, Rob's not sold. I think I'm old school. Cool. I, think, I think there's just different ways. Yeah, I think, yeah. I think it would be a good thing to have a bunch of cheerleaders. Like, I mean, talk about the support. The team would feel better. Everybody would feel this, better. You and I would qualify. We could be I, on a team. I bet you would start seeing more guys, though. That's like, right. really? Yeah, yeah. Rah, rah. Just boom, boom. Yeah, and, and we... It, <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, we'd just be accepted. We'd just be on a team. I mean, who wouldn't want to be a dude in the cheerleading squad? Like, come yeah, on. I mean, Jesus. <laughs> Sign me up right now. There you okay. go. Hey, I'd love to see you guys in skirts. I think it's great. <laughs> well, I mean, Shit. if the girls can go into the Boy Scouts, then why can't we go into the Girl Scouts? I mean, why not? Okay, mm-hmm. let's talk about that for a moment. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now, here I am, little Miss Kindness. Uh-huh. Okay. Yep, yep. Let the Boy Scouts be the Boy Scouts and the Girl Scouts be the Girl Scouts. Goodness gracious. Really? So uh, with you. Why? Yeah. Why? Explain. Well, yeah. It's like... Uh, if if the Girl Scouts are so bad and the girls have to join the Boy Scouts, yeah. then it tells me the Girl Scouts need to make some modifications. Uh, definitely, I separate. It's, it's always been yeah, like that. Maybe you know? maybe the Girl Scouts are camping enough, or not doing enough knots, or something, or not enough badges, or maybe they don't want to wear those skirts anymore. Or yeah, something. change it, switch it up, make it fun, yeah. and so the Girl Scouts can have as all the great things yeah. the Boy Scouts have. Yeah, and why can't they work well, together? You yeah, know? and then work together. Yeah. I don't well, know. I think I was thrown out of Girl Scouts. I really don't remember, probably for talking <laughs> too much or something, I was a or something like that. <laughs> but um, do Girl Scout do Girl Scouts do the same thing Boy Scouts do as far as merit badges go or something like that? I don't I mean, know. I don't know. That's I, a great I question. I see them with badges, at, you know, the grocery stores and stuff. Wouldn't that be great to get like a Girl Scout leader on this show and ask her why do girls feel like they need to get on the Boy Scouts? Oh, it would be a, what's lacking. I, that's a great question. That's a great. Yeah, one. I agree. I agree. I'm, I'm not quite. I'm not quite. I don't get it. I, I don't think it's really necessary. So. Me too. I think there you it's go. Just, yeah. I, I don't yeah. think so. They're causing but, conflict um, where there shouldn't be any conflict. You know, it's pretty. Then they should have Boy Scout cookies. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. 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 What would be Scouts, awesome though? cookies? Would be to, like oil cookies and milk. Oh, yeah, that's that's right. Right. Shape of baseballs that's and right. things right. like that. Just Football. Just... <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, Girl Scout cookies are phenomenal. So they're doing something right. That's all I gotta say. Yeah. <laughs> What's your favorite Girl Scout cookie? <laughs> What's that? What? your favorite girl scout cookie. oh what's my favorite oh so i like the mint one but i also like uh the one with the coconut oh, i forget God, the name yeah. the, um i forget what they call those, those uh, you know what I'm about yeah, yeah. Yep, my are favorite they, are they samoas I think? yes, yes. 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 <laughs> great job oh, they're so good <laughs> they're, they're so awesome good. and then you got the peanut butter ones right yeah but you oh, need, yeah. i can't drink milk do you anymore. know yeah, when I'm going to the grocery sco- store and i see these girl scouts you know i can't ever say no to you know to these rotten kids right <laughs> you know and i'll say i'll get you when i'm coming out and there it is five boxes of cookies that yep. i don't need and they're gone within the week right they're gone oh, yeah and they're delicious and they're uh, really good they came up with some new ones but i don't remember what they are yeah. so, so now i God. heard a rumor about you and lisa no from, from, from coffee crew i heard you guys okay, are doing Mr. a show Universe, about tell me. you guys are doing a show about relationships Yes, we are. Nice. So tell us a little bit about what you guys are talking about. Oh, boy. Uh, We have almost a notebook filled with subjects that we would be texting each other and calling each other at all hours saying, what about this? What about this? What about this? Our first show, we had 600 listeners. Wow. Um, And it was was about infidelity. Yeah. And um, a couple of people said... Um, infidelity is a very touchy subject. I said, yes, but it will create dialogue, which is what we wanted to do. Absolutely. Yeah, and so we talked about that. Right we, you know, <laughs> we opened up the chat room, of course, mm-hmm. and uh, we had a lot of um, discussions going back and forth about that. Uh, we talk about, um, we talked about infidelity. We talk about trust, mm-hmm. how to trust somebody again, how to keep a marriage, how to keep the spice going. Ooh. Um Let's see what else. Uh, off the top of my head. Um, well, does the guy or the girl get see. a pass if they mess up once? What's your opinion? I mean, I think I got mine, but I mean, what do you think? Okay. If let's say they mess up, well, what's your opinion? Uh, um, I know it's, it's situational, a, it but it comes a very double edged sword. Absolutely. Um, but if they mess up once and they're deeply sorry and really remorseful and really said it'll never happen again and the wife or the guy or you know whoever it is opts to trust that person again which takes a lot of fortitude and stick-to-itiveness i think a marriage could succeed uh, or survive but i I think it takes an awful lot of um love and forgiveness sure and uh to make it work. I don't know what that noise is. Do you guys hear it? No. 
Sounds like guess, a sounds like a fan or something. Yeah, I don't think it's like jam. I don't know. Okay, but it's probably but a anyway, refrigerator. Um, yeah, the refrigerator it's kicked a refrigerator. in. <laughs> no, is it your refrigerator? Get me a beer. Thank I know, you. right? Cooling the beer down, but uh, I I agree. It's that's a okay. Tough How topic. do you feel about that, Derek? I, I'm pretty. I'm pretty. Go ahead, sure. Rob. I think all. I think every husband should buy their their wives fly fishing gear. <laughs> what? <laughs> there are guys that can't even do that. <laughs> yeah, my wife's actually a pretty good fly fishing. Well, yeah. I mean, it's that's yeah, tough. That's yeah. tough. But and, I mean, and that would keep infidelity from happening. I know, yeah, right? In a, good, in a good pair of waders. Yeah, but yeah, be like, what the yeah, hell are you I'm talking a very about? romantic guy. I'm telling <laughs> right? you, fly fishing gear. Yeah. <laughs> and then Robin's abusing. <laughs> no, 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 well, no, no. She comes along, man. Yeah, she's, she's from Washington, right? Yeah, so I mean, that's part of school, okay, My okay. whole, all my kids can even fly fish. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then then when it really gets romantic, buy them a float tube. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I see where really? you're coming from. I hear you. Yeah. Yep. Seriously? There's nothing more Seriously. romantic than blowing up your float tubes. <laughs> Karen said Cub Scouts sell popcorn. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know that. Oh, well, they do? Yeah. I, I, I've never bought popcorn. Who knew? Yeah, right? I haven't been around. I haven't so seen, do we, do I we haven't need seen to say hello Scouts to anybody? Anybody? Yeah, lots of people. Yes. Karen, Chase, uh, so Jace. Fun. Sorry, oh, Jace. Say hello to some folks there. Yeah, sorry. Um, okay. <laughs> Karen, Jace. I'm, I'm looking like this. I don't have my glasses. Patrick. Let me see. Okay, good. Really? And the, well, the hi, everybody. coolest and I can't, sweetest can't person in the world, then. Helen. Helen. Like, we appreciate you so much. You're Definitely. awesome. Helen is not. Oh, <clears throat> hi. Ah, uh, that's shout out to Karen Smalling. Hi, Ren. Right she's on. the redhead right there. That um, I don't know if you can see her. She's the pretty redhead right there. Yeah, she, she's she's low. she's pretty funny. She's helping yeah, us out. She's, Derek she's awesome. Me see she, the um, oh, Karen she said her car and <laughs> her car is the safe room. <laughs> Her cars in the I'm not room. allowed to see the chat. Get out of here. <laughs> okay, I'm missing. I'm missing some uh, dialogue here. I'm gonna have yeah, to turn you guys up a little bit. <laughs> just but some um, stuff. about don't Lisa worry. and I, uh, <laughs> so, you know. Um, so well, I guess ahead, I should Bob. actually go ahead. talk about paradigms. <laughs> so How about let me we talk let about me paradigms. define yes. my paradigm uh, definition, and then I'm gonna let he Helen uh, work on it. So. I'm going to put it in layman's terms. Yeah, explain what it is, because yeah. that's the first so, thing I had to do was look it up. So, uh, I was using a real simple thing with uh, Derek today, and let's say, as a kid, your parents raised you to brush your teeth in the morning. Yeah. And in, uh, as a teenager, your kids, the whole family, always brushed their teeth in the morning. Mm -hmm. And then you're an adult, and you've always brushed your teeth in the morning. Yep. And suddenly, the dental association says, stop. Stop it. Knock it off. You need to brush your teeth before you go to bed. That's the way to do it. So, first of all, that's a struggle all in itself because okay. you have a habit, mm -hmm. a, a generational learned habit yep. that you were taught, and they're telling you to change it. Sure. So, what it is is a habit or a belief that you've grown up with is, a par is your paradigm that you always brush your teeth in the morning. Yeah. To change that and and start brushing your teeth in the evenings only gotcha. would be a paradigm shift. Great analogy. Yeah, I that's, think that's, that's the way I, I like to word it. So how would you word it, Helen? Well, first of all, I thought that was very good. Uh, to me, a, a paradigm is just a mental um, habit that you have that you've grown up with and that uh, can be for positive or negative. Um, when you were talking, this is what I thought. Um, as you're growing up and you're a child and you become a teenager and a young man, young woman, and as you get older, you're brought up with this. You think money grows on trees? Oh, you yeah. have to work hard <laughs> to get happy. And you're brought up with that in your mind the whole, whole time of, of, as you're uh, growing up. And what it does is it sticks with you and you cannot really think as far as the law of attraction practitioner goes well I can work for a living but I can have fun doing it and I can have a really great time and it takes practice to make a paradigm shift and you have to start working at that when it's so ingrained in your head because the paradigm is just there it's mm -hmm. not going anywhere until yeah. you start working to change it and then it takes time it takes work you can change it into a more positive I call it basically a pivot my okay. favorite word. You're, you're basically pivoting. You're taking the negative aspect of a thought mm -hmm. and you're pivoting it into a more positive. Gotcha. Okay. What do you think? 
Uh, and you know, with paradigms, it's kind of funny because you know we we're talking earlier. Just I brought up a couple subjects mm -hmm. like safe spaces and cry rooms. Yeah, yeah. Now you and I, because mm -hmm. of the way we we're brought up, mm -hmm. we have a habit or something we we're taught. Yep, yep. Maybe we need to change our paradigm and and do a paradigm shape uh, shift of maybe safe rooms is the way to go, and maybe we should have cry rooms. No. Uh, Why? <laughs> And Why? some paradigms are not meant to change. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I I don't agree with the, the cry rooms. I think yeah, you, I mean, no, you have to t make some kind of effort um, when sure. think, when you know the tough gets going. Uh, I'm I'm as you know, big believer in the law of attraction. But life is yeah. going to get in the way. Life Absolutely. is going to happen. Yeah. And letting yourself go sit in the corner and, and cry your eyes out and not try to solve uh, an issue or a totally. challenge I never say problem yeah. uh, but trying to solve that uh, really doesn't do anything it just makes people say oh you're special I'm gonna pay attention to you you right. don't have to change because you have issues or challenges going on I don't yeah. agree with it I'm with you yeah, yeah. well you know um, the reason I like to talk about paradigms is because we're all trying to evolve yeah in one way or another and so uh, um, paradigms a lot of times can like for example I talk about paradigms a lot in RV talk radio yeah because I'm, I meet so many people have been working all their lives mm -hmm. and they keep thinking well, let's say let's use the example of uh, retiring at 55 okay I don't know how many people I've met those go well I'm gonna go to 57 okay well, no maybe 59 yeah and they keep working oh, I'll go to 62 mm -hmm. and it's like never enough and it's like they can't believe that if they retired, no matter how much money they make, yeah. they're going to be happy and live within those means. Yeah. And so they can't break that paradigm of working nine to five all their lives. And before, by the time they retire yeah. and they do wait to 65 or 72 or whatever, they die the next year and miss out on all the things they worked on all their lives. Yeah. And so I, I like to talk about paradigms a lot because uh, we have so many belief systems like... Uh, can I live on you know uh, a couple thousand dollars a month less than I did when I was employed at the big company or whatever? Yeah. And and it's all within their mind. It's their mind holding them back. They have the fear. And, yeah. Yeah. And and it applies to so many things. So like, but in RV travel, it's like people that want to buy an RV and go travel the United mm -hmm. States. So many of them never do it because of their belief system, mm -hmm. or they talk themselves out, or can't even fathom. The fact that they could maybe sell their house, buy a nice RV, go travel for a year or two, and maybe go buy a smaller little house later on uh, as they get older. Yeah. So well, I'd like Rob, to talk do you think about they're paradigm. afraid to. Go ahead. What? They're afraid to. Yes. Yeah. The fear. Yeah. Yeah. Don't yeah. Worry. It's, and it's, it's a fear of change. And change is, mm -hmm. uh, really ties into paradigms a lot because uh, uh, people fight change. Change is hard. Oh, big time. Oh. Yeah. I mean, well, I think people are people don't like to step out of their comfort zone. Exactly, we exactly. could take that so far as, you know, I'm a big believer in reinvention and people are comfortable where they are. And for them to step out of the box and change, it takes um, a lot of effort, a lot of mental muscle. And a lot of times I don't think people want to do that. I have noticed uh, sometimes as a coach, people say they want to change. But when it really comes down to making a real effort to do that, they really don't want to. Yeah. They mm -hmm. they they are more comfortable in 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 their comfort zone. That oh, yeah. they want to stay there. There's a lot of people that um, I've met, and it's hard for me to fathom mm -hmm. that live a life of a pattern. They sure. love routine. Yeah. And so when you, I introduce like RV travel and things like to them, that. Is a total change of pattern. Um, some people just love to co come home, watch TV, maybe go see a concert or oh, maybe yeah. a movie together, and keep that regular routine, mowing the lawn, all that stuff, and that's their life, and they're perfectly happy, which is great. There's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with that, because yeah. if we're all adventurers, we'd never get anything done. <laughs> yeah, we we'll have a lot of stuff. But a lot of that has to do with paradigms of a way you've lived a certain way all your life. And now you're getting into your retirement golden years, mm -hmm. and it's like you know you could change it up, yeah. you know. And, and but it will take a paradigm shift to do it. Big time. 
And I, there's not very many people that make that paradigm shift that they'll go, damn, I wish I wouldn't have done that. <laughs> it's, like, it's a risk. Yeah. I mean, whenever there's a risk, it's, yeah. you're going to So change back paradigms out. and paradigm shifting. Uh, I'm really glad she brought that up because yeah. really uh, they're integrated. Uh, oh, change yeah. is paradigms. They're all associated for sure. Um, one interesting uh, quote, uh, comment that Karen Smalling said about uh, the crying room, which I think is a very interesting point. Yeah. She said, what if the crying room is not to cry, but considered a room of comfort, meditation, like a child's timeout corner with pillows and books? That would be a what bad it is. thing. It is. I would yeah, agree with that. For because a timeout. Thank you, Karen. Yeah, Ren, I think, thank Karen, you. that's a great point. I appreciate point. I that. Meditation but, um, is good. You know, what it also takes for a paradigm shift Again, it takes that mental muscle to really start talking to yourself. Yeah. Don't don't you think, Rob, that it starts with talking to yourself? Don't you agree? I talk to myself all the time. Yeah, we all got little voices. I, I have complete arguments and everything. Yeah, exactly. In fact, my, you know, because I'm the sole owner of my company, sure, I have to get mirrors just to have a staff meeting. God. Yeah. See, my brain's talking to my heart. My heart's arguing. My brain happens every day. You know. <laughs> It's true. Well, you know, the heart has its own energy, but we won't even go there exactly, today. That's exactly. a whole other subject. But, uh, <laughs> but I think once you start realizing that um, this paradigm isn't working for you and mm -hmm. it's basically making you an unhappy person, then you start thinking about how are we going to make this situation beneficial to me? What is a lesson here? What is a blessing here? And how can I change it to enjoy my life? Yeah. Because with the law of attraction, the bottom line is we want to be happy and enjoy our life and feel good. Yeah. And so once we start working with that, I started with affirmations and affirmations are, are great. I also write things down when I want to change them. Yeah. Uh, that's important. But the affirmations, just saying out loud, I am powerful, I am happy, I don't know, whatever, I, mind change. I have a standard set of affirmations I say every morning and every evening, but during the day, I say they change every day. How yeah. about you? Yeah, I mean, for me, the first 20 minutes I heard sets the tone yes. for your day. So whatever you say to yourself or whatever you do sets the mm -hmm. precedence for how your whole day is gonna kind of roll out. So uh, mantras and, and I say things to myself every morning, just positive affirmations, just Good. to stay on that positive level. Yeah. For me, I mean, it works too. I'm always happy. You, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Rob's like, I just yeah, need Rob, to remember to put my like, pants on. You do on. seem yeah, like a like, happy guy. You really do. <laughs> you, you seem like you have very good energy. You do, which I noticed, you know, right away from you, which was awfully nice. But I want to ask Derek, what was, um, what was your issue when you first sat down? You said uh, you had some things you wanted to work on. Oh, sh <laughs> go for it. Well, uh -oh. starting this new job, there's just over, um, it's information overload. So learning something new, um, is, especially with insurance, is such a broad subject that there's so many different avenues. So that's one thing that's kind of, you know, filling my head full of all these, these new basic, I guess, definitions and different things. But um, trying to organize everything so I can, you know, basically have a schedule each day and so I can get everything done and still successfully make a paycheck every week. So it's just maybe the stress and I mean change, you know, the paradigm shift, but this change for me is I get to make my own schedule and do kind of, you know, go with what I want to do. But at the same time, the beginning of every new job is difficult because you got to learn so much. And so, yeah, I think it's, I think. Uh, and I've seen him kind of going through this change. He's overwhelmed. Big time. And of course, Big you get time. under when you get into sales. Yeah. Um, I under I've been there only because I've yeah. been there. I can't say I'm an expert at. It. Sure, sure. There is a certain pressure you put on yourself and you, and the people that surround you. You feel oh, like yeah. you want to support or be contribute to. Yeah. And so you put that pressure on yourself. Mm -hmm. But I think the one thing I'd like to at least with the radio station because. I don't know how many times on the radio station Derek has called me up and says, hey, you want to do a show? And I know how much you love it. Sure, sure. And so look at this time as, okay, we shut her down. This is your time to kind of bring her down, and this is your fun time. Oh, yeah. And, it's hard and, to and, shift. And then so uh, uh, somehow do your little sh you know, paradigm or mind shift as you come to the studio here. Sure. 
and let it go and I bet you really feel good yeah and just realize and then when you're all done it all starts trickling back you know yeah but uh uh it's very overwhelming I certainly yeah. I truly understand it because I've been there mm -hmm. it's just the beginning it's know? a young thing kind of to you yeah. you want to contribute you want to be part of society you want to make money all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. and that's all stuff that's all part of our paradigms and stuff sure. but um, mm -hmm. I, I see it in him all the time, and this, and it's like, uh, and I, I so much understand because I, I was, I was that way before too. Yeah. I wish somebody was there that I could just spill out on a little bit and then have my fun time and separate yeah. the two. So very difficult. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, I was in sales uh, a few years ago, and um, I loved what I did. I loved selling, mm -hmm. and uh, it was easy. I, I, but I decided it was going to be easy. I decided every day after I did my personal affirmations Hello. that... Just a minute here. I think Hello. there's a mystery phone call here. Can you hear it? Uh, Who is maybe? this? Hello. Hi. Hello, hello. Can you hear that okay, Helen? Hello, everybody. No. You can't hear it? No. You can't hear it. Oh, my gosh. How about now? I don't know if she can hear it. Hello. Hi. I can't can you hear, hear us okay, Lisa? I can. How are you guys? Pretty good. So apparently I did. I made a mistake. <laughs> That's all right. I don't know how to get a Helen to be able to hear this. I can share her. Oh, put it on speaker. We can do it this I way. Can, yeah, she can. Hold on there. I think we got away. Yep, hit speakerphone and we're good. I bet she can hear it now. Okay, now. Say hello there, Lisa. Can you hear me now? I can. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> so, how's everybody doing? Did I interrupt anything? No, no. And, and we needed you to call because Derek needs you. <laughs> now he's going he through does. all he's going through all the stress of this test he just took yeah. for insurance, and it comes to find out shh, Lisa just took the same test. Lisa knows my pain, right? Now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it was not an easy thing. Yes, yeah, totally. So, yeah. welcome I, uh, to the show, Lisa. I'm not ashamed of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, I'm we're so, so happy ha that I got the call. Yes. yes. So uh, we didn't tell Helen that we uh, we, did we, we, uh, we had this pre-planned a little bit. So that's why he interrupted you. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's okay. Helen was making that's a good my point. Girl. Yeah. And she <laughs> was. She was talking about something very important. But uh, you know, her friendship with Lisa is so strong. We I had just to, to make up. sure. Yeah, we had to make I'm sure. I'm good. This. Oh, I'm good. <laughs> good, 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 good. Awesome. So um, the one thing I gotta say, like paradigms, um, uh, and and Le with Lisa here and stuff, it's really per uh, perfect. We're two, first of all, we're on the different both sides of the continent, on sure. diff two different oceans. Yeah. yeah, we've met each other through kind of uh, the radio stations and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And there's kind of some changes going on in their side, so they're kind of open. Their their schedules are open. Sure. And I and, and yeah. here's a parad here's a great paradigm shift. Mm -hmm. Is I kind of like you know it'd be so fun to start working with helen and them while they have the time oh yeah and lisa would be great but oh, yeah. the first thing that goes through my head is oh they they don't want to we didn't lose her did we uh oh we lost lisa she'll be back yeah <laughs> um but the, the maybe the, she didn't want to work with you that much yeah she said <laughs> <laughs> see you go back lisa go Gotta back go. um anyway so uh the, the first thing that goes through my head is oh they, they, you know, they probably look at me as kind of a peon and <laughs> a little guy, and, and they wouldn't be interested in all that stuff. And it's like, but I, yet I still jump the fence and says, I'm, I'm making the call. There we go. Joe's Pizza. Go get her. Ooh. There we go. Is Lisa back? I'm back. I'm like, you're me already. I know. I, know. Right? I thought, wow, maybe I was wrong. <laughs> yeah, she's like, <laughs> <laughs> click. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, the the neat part was like, is like, well, first of all, they're very approachable people. Easy to talk to. Yeah. But you know, you always, I could have talked myself out of it. Yeah. And I'll, not made that phone call. Oh, yeah. And so now it's like, uh, um, and it's like, 
we've become really good friends, mm-hmm. and yet, and we all have these different talents. That, sure, sure. Um, talking about me? paradigms and law of attraction and in issues like this, mm-hmm. I like the fact that we're talking them out loud because if somebody's listening to it, they're going through stuff, mm-hmm. maybe we'll oh, jolt something yeah. that helps them, you know? I hope so. Yeah. So uh, I, I'm, Absolutely. S- yeah. I'm so I'm glad frozen. that uh, I got finally I got a chance to talk to Lisa this morning and I, I tried to get her autograph over the telephone right couldn't do it I know and, uh, but uh, yeah okay. it's like uh, so, so <laughs> hey hey Lisa can you introduce yourself yeah, Just yeah go ahead please. please oh I'm Lisa Monaco I'm from New York, New York. Long Island nice um, I have do you, you want a little bio yeah, yeah please have a bunch of kids I'm a photographer nice um, sweet what else? I travel between Florida and New York. Cool. Um, my fiance lives here in Florida, and uh, I have uh, a, a navy, a navy son, a college son, and two more kids just at the tail end of high school. Okay. Um, they're still in New York, so that's why I, I bop back and forth. Okay. And um, you know, I have a, I have a couple of dogs that I love. And uh, just trying to live in the dream. Live in the dream. I love it. So you're in Florida right now, is that right? In Florida at the moment, yeah. Cool. It is quite delightful, I'm not going to lie. Oh, man. I bet. That's awesome. Well, welcome to the show. We really appreciate you calling. Yeah. And uh, now, uh, Lisa. Thank you for having me on today. So Lisa, is really, once again, really nice to have you on the show. Thank you for surprising us. You and Helen have been doing a relationship show uh, and you're saying that you'd love to get some guy feedback yeah the guy saw absolutely <laughs> and, uh, that was one of the first things I had said to Helen when we first were talking about doing the show I said I would love to hear a man's perspective yeah um, about anything really so on any level well we well, we're I don't know if we're kind of like men but we're kind of young at heart yeah <laughs> two of us together <laughs> equal a man I guess that's right <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh, yeah. So how long have you guys been doing your show together? Ooh. Who do you want to take that? Um uh, let me turn this down a little bit. Uh Helen, how long I'll let Helen talk a little well, bit. Well, uh, we cut. have been talking about it, I would say for a good few months. And uh, we were thinking about the concept as to how we're going to do it uh, and coming up with subjects. And as I said before, we have a whole notebook of subjects about relationships to talk about. Mm -hmm. And we got so in tune with one another that we were (laughs) texting each other and calling each other at all hours of the day and night saying, what about this? Great idea. What about that? Great idea. (laughs) And we just went with it and we rolled with it. And we seriously have a notebook filled of ideas to talk about relationships because everybody's in one, uh, either a platonic one or a love one or a business one. And every relationship has issues from time to time. And we picked apart those issues every which way but loose. (laughs) And um, Lisa and I also have a really good rapport and a good chemistry that we just bounce off of one another. So our first show, uh, I, I don't know if this got uh, recorded or not, but we had 600 views on our first show, wow. which is really fabulous. Oh, yeah. And uh, yeah. lots of um, interaction because we talked about infidelity. Yeah. Lisa, you want to take it? Yeah, you know, people love talking about relationships, whether they're in it. Uh, <laughs> oh, wishing to be in they're it. They're divorced, you know, about love, about the parts that are not so lovable, you know, mm-hmm. because some relationships, you know, you have your highs, you have your lows. Um, we, we actually just recently put a question out on our, um, our Facebook page, we sent how and talk relationships, and people are engaged in that. Um, people feed off of this, and I think it also inspires people because I think you can learn a lot from other people and things that they've been through or um, or maybe some people just have questions and, and concerns but don't necessarily want to uh, go on air, 
you know, and put themselves out there, they can privately inbox us, which people have done. Yeah. And um, I think it's just really inspiring and uh, a very hot topic, I have to tell you. Yeah, big yeah. time. Oh, uh, I'm, and, and go ahead. There's, there's one thing I do want to say, and Lisa and I made this very clear, that whatever we talk about with relationships, we're not out to bash anybody. No. We're not out to right. badmouth the male species or the female species. Yeah. We're, not about, we're not about embarrassing anybody. We're just creating hot topics that everybody wants to share and have something to say. Exactly. Yeah, because yeah, I, I mean, I mean, I've been convinced all my life that I'm a... A hunk of burning love. <laughs> I, mean, I, I certainly wouldn't want my feelings hurt. <laughs> my God. And me Hi, and Rob, we kept saying, How we were you? like, we need a woman's perspective. And, I, and we were both going, you know what? I wish we had Helen and Lisa to kind of, <laughs> you know, we have. we've said it numerous times. So Over and over. You're answering. Law of attraction. Our wish. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We have. Uh, um, yeah, it it's going like, to be interesting. Yeah. And it's funny, like uh, the way that they were talking to each other by texting and talking mm -hmm. with them. You and I are doing the same thing. It's like, yeah. Rob, I got this idea, and you'll bleep me in the middle of something. It's yeah. like, yeah. it's like uh, brainstorming ideas yeah, and stuff yeah. for the next show. And it's like, uh, it's like we're doing the same thing between each other that you and Lisa are doing. So yeah. it's kind of funny. Yep. Yep. Now we have to. It's do funny. It. We have to add them to our rhyming. Or we'll never get any sleep. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, we kind of we try to shut our phones down at a certain point. Yeah, Otherwise, so I think we'd it. be up at two o'clock in the morning saying, "You up?" Yeah, yeah. exactly. And, you know, so we yeah. try to, uh, and we do respect one another's space. Even when we're calling, I know if she doesn't pick up the phone, it's not a slight. Yeah. She's just got you know other things to do, and totally. I know she'll get back to me. Yeah. And it's that kind of comfort in the relationship, which is really good too. Yeah. It's Lisa way. and I. It's you know, definitely I a love say, relationship. It's not a sexual phone, relationship, but it's definitely a love relationship. Absolutely. Well, go, go ahead, Lisa. Yeah. My phone nine times out of ten is on silent because. Um, my fiance, he works from home. Mm. So I'll keep it on silent. So if I'm not next to the phone, like earlier, Helen had called this morning mm -hmm. and um, it was plugged, you know, it was charging. It was on the charger. So I was in the other room. I can't, I come in, I check it periodically because I'm also, you know, I'm a parent. So I'm always constantly checking my phone. Yeah. And um, I saw Helen call. I'm like, oh, I got to call her back. <laughs> you know, so a lot of times, you know, he, 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 we're, we're pretty good with that. We're pretty on the same page with that because we, you know, yeah. she's doing her thing, I'm mm -hmm. doing my thing. But in between, we're texting ideas and just fun stuff, um, pictures for our page or whatever it may be. Um, yeah. You know, I, I absolutely love it. I'm so blessed to have met the people that I needed to meet because some, some people, you know, they come into your life and you don't, necessarily stay friends with them they're they're there uh, to teach you a lesson maybe sure. and um you know the first show that i ever did allowed me to meet the good people that i've met this past year so i'm very That's very true. grateful for that and yeah. even though that i'm not actively involved in their lives i wouldn't have met helen if that didn't happen so i'm very very grateful for that nice you know, my my life is. I mean, in the last so more than half a year, has changed so much with all the new acquaintances I've met, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm truly cool. thankful for all that. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, and to have a, a new connection to the East Coast and, and all that stuff, kind of important to me. I kind of like, yeah. like that. It's good. And uh, yeah. And and then I got us. Um, and I'm always want to make sure that everybody over in the East Coast there knows how much I'm grateful for the, the new relationships, the new fun we're having. Yeah. And not to mention, I love Law of Attraction. And it's like, ever since I knew that she was doing it, mm -hmm. that show, I try to catch some of it. I could, yeah. I'd get busy too, and I can't watch a whole show, but it's like, oh, I wish I could have her on our, <laughs> have her yeah. at our station, because yeah. I love that subject. And so it just worked and out here so we good. are. Yep, <laughs> and we're all together now. Yep, big family. That's Everybody right. can benefit from it, too. Yeah, and I even considered us part of the family, even when, like, the cop group and crew were together. Mm -hmm. I felt like mm -hmm. we were part of their team, even though we are doing different shows at different mm -hmm. radio stations. And so... Yeah. Um, right. And when we talked to each other, it just felt like that. So, yeah. And uh, uh, I'm, I'm hoping that 
will continue, and, and, and I'm yeah. sure it is. And we have great relationships with Eric and uh, and Jace too. So yeah, it's definitely like, honored to have absolutely. you guys with us. We really yes. appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So uh, absolutely. So I, I I'm, so here's the question: Does Lisa have a safe space? <laughs> 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 or a crying or a cry room. She's well, got the I beach. Need a crying room you before. Actually, I've seen her, I've seen her safe space. It's the beach. I've seen all these pictures of Lisa know. on the beach. That's, yeah, that's my that's my church. Oh that's a, yeah, right that's there. a that's a that's good safe church. space. Yeah, Lovely. not a bad place to be. Yeah. For sure. My safe yeah. space is, um, is the kitchen <laughs> and the refrigerator. <laughs> Mine's my Traeger. <laughs> yes. my, my, when I'm cooking, I'm the Traeger. And by the way, after this show, I'm doing beef jerky. Nice. Yes, so you'll have to Wait a minute. Me. What's a Traeger? It's Excuse a, me. It's a, it's a uh, grill, a cooking grill. It's a pellet uh, grill. Oh, and, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, uh, I try to make, I make, a, well, yeah, it's a barbecue, but it's a Traeger. <laughs> Oh, okay. I, I, is this like the Roll, the Rolls Royce of grills? Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Okay, I've and got a 25-year-old beat-up Weber. <laughs> that works too. <laughs> it's all good. Yep. Yeah, yeah, that's my hey, kind of hobby. Weber's last forever. Yeah, well, mm. yeah, I, my, I use uh, it with the, uh, with the coal that supposedly is a carcinogen, but it still tastes so good, I don't care. Oh, exactly. yeah, Just yeah, saying. yeah, yeah. Just I just saying. made. I just. You guys would be so proud of me. I made the my own prime rib mm-hmm. last weekend. It was so good. Oh my gosh! It, uh, it was. Why I, weren't we invited? Well, I had to do experiment right? first. It was kind of like this show. <laughs> <laughs> I had to see if I could do it first. So now, now right. you can come over and we'll have all everybody over. Uh, no problem, and, and 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 Derek. Once he sells some more insurance, he will pay for all the tickets, right? <laughs> I mean, I'm game. <laughs> Why awesome. not? Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, you could always do a half an hour insurance show or something like that. Yeah, you know, actually, be that'd be really interesting. And mm-hmm. you know, anything that was kind of interesting. You said you're doing health insurance. Yeah. And Lisa, are you doing health insurance or life insurance? Um, I took the course for life on the health and annuities, but I'm concentrating on um, actually life insurance at the final expense. Yeah, yeah. So of it, um, could you, right now, yeah. So once after a few months, once you guys kind of get it down, mm-hmm. then, wouldn't that be an interesting show? to talk about all the different things you've learned? Absolutely, um, yeah. Because oh, I tell yeah, you. Yeah. I, 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 one of the reasons, and I, I'll bring this up for future shows. Sure. One of the reasons Sherry and I are not RVing anymore mm-hmm. is when we, when I retired and we hit the road and mm-hmm. we started looking to Obamacare, <laughs> it was more than our house payment. Yeah. Oh yeah. So it made more. So we came off the road, bought a house. Yeah. Because it made more sense. I, if I'm going to pay two, three thousand a month for for Obamacare, which yeah. I don't pay. I mean, right. and we don't pay that for our house either. <laughs> but. Uh, um, <laughs> I may as well buy a house again and exactly. settle down and have fun at owning a home again, Seriously. and wait and wait till we're sixty-five and maybe we can do yeah. something with uh, that. So I think you contribute tons to not only life insurance but health insurance, yeah. both both of it. Yeah. And what a great subject that would be! It'll be great. And my focus is on health, Lisa. So it would be great to you know. <laughs> Can you talk to you? I can talk to you for hours life. about it. Yeah. yeah. Can you feel the paradigm universe expo- oh, totally. exploding? Yeah, here? man. So, yeah. so Lisa, um, I got a new nickname. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, Helen calls me Mister Universe. <laughs> Oh, hi, I Mr. Like Universe. Hi. Yeah. Why, why but we, we got we got to hear it in Lisa's voice because she's like, Mr. Universe. <laughs> Mr. Universe, how you doing? <laughs> anyway, so, oh man! So Lisa was like, oh, "It sounds like the inner universe just answered my question, my my uh, my request." Oh, and uh, so I told her, well, I must be Mr. Universe. <laughs> yes, I do. So that's my new nickname. That's fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. I like yeah, it. Yeah, I, I learned of the law of attraction not from Helen first, but from my fiancé. Oh, who nice. Who yeah. was a big, big, big believer in law of attraction. So when he and I got together three years ago almost. That's cool. Um, that's how I first started learning about really what it meant 
Mm. And then when I met Helen, I was I was like astounded. I'm like, wow, these two are gonna really like each other. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I guess I can't I be her Mr. Mr. Universe. No, no. <laughs> Bummer. <laughs> But well, it's crazy. I could, I could be Helen's Mr. Universe, though. <laughs> it's crazy Mr. how it connects people, though. It's, 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 it's so fascinating. you got to say it right. It's Mr. Universe. <laughs> Mr. Universe. <laughs> oh, gosh. Right. That's great. <laughs> oh, no. Now I'm going to be thinking of that. I'm going to be thinking of you now. Everyone's Mr. Universe. It's Mr. Universe. What a terrible name. My wife is going to kill me. <laughs> what did you got? What did they call you? <laughs> Mr. Universe. <laughs> Mr. Universe, hi. That's right. <laughs> that's going to haunt us. <laughs> anyway, yeah, that's guys, not going so away. I, just, just saying, Rob, that's not going anywhere. No, that's your no. moniker for. Yeah, this is a secret. This is a secret. Nobody's going to hear this. So. Yeah. yeah so. <laughs> it won't be going out of my mouth. I'll tell no, you that no, much. No, yeah. Yeah, don't you dare call me Mr. Universe. <laughs> So, hey, you have, uh, to go home, you have to go home to your wife, and she says something to you, be like, that's Mr. Universe to you, <laughs> That's right, <laughs> that's Mr. Universe. Call me by my name. <laughs> so, so um, i, I, I got to wrap us up here. Oh, yeah. But I do, I want to I want to thank both of you so much for being on the show. Yes. Uh, you know, we've always loved you guys to death, and we've always admired uh, the shows that you were doing in mm-hmm. the past. And so we're hoping to share some time with you guys while mm-hmm. we can. And... Uh, uh, I know you may have future stuff coming back, and when we do, we'll, we'll embrace that a lot. But until then, yeah. we're going to just kind of work together and have some fun together. Exactly. And try to do some shows together. Yeah. And uh, it'd be fun if I can get the Skype to work for Lisa. Yeah, we, yeah. we'll get it. Okay. We'll, get it. we'll have it all organized. But What about Helen? Wait oh, a minute. Helen, you're, that's, you're, in, Helen. Helen. you're in, like You know, this in. happens all the time. <laughs> Helen's like, oh, you love me some. No, I want to get both of you on the screen. So we got, <laughs> we got you handled. The only reason we lost you today was my fault. It was my internet went down. Yeah. You did sure. everything right. You get Lisa on the phone, and, <laughs> and Helen, and we, and we and Helen, Helen goes bye-bye. And her yeah. energy's so okay. strong, it just, she just it shuts like down a, the internet. It was like a solar flare. Boom. Okay, fine. <laughs> so yeah, we love you two to death, and I want to thank you both so much for being on the show today. And yeah. we're hoping we don't have too many disruptions no, next time. No, we'll be good. We'll be good. And uh, uh, tomorrow, I think we'll regroup, see if we can yeah. get both of them on. Yeah, yeah tomorrow we'll go from there. Awesome. It'll be what four o'clock okay. on the East Coast, one o'clock here. Uh, yeah, it'll be four Perfect. o'clock. Be four o'clock your time, Helen. And got I know it. you got a meeting at five, so yeah. we'll, we'll make it work. Even if you have um, to leave a little early, no problem. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. And then Terrific. I'll try to I'll talk to Lisa some more either later today or tomorrow and then we'll try to coordinate something with her. And we're talking relationships tomorrow. Yes, we're so gonna talk about relationships. Yeah. Don't miss it. And, and, and yeah, all you need to know from history. Yeah, Universe. You're gonna learn everything. <laughs> Straighten your lives up. <laughs> totally. So anyway, hey, thanks, guys. we got to get going. Thank you very much for listening to our show. And we'll see everybody next time. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Hey, thanks for listening to Arizona Talk Radio. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. We'd appreciate it. Bye now.